Hello and welcome to my short demo on Scale.io from EMC to support storage for Windows Hyper-V clusters. Um, before we start, we just have a short review on my environment. So in my environment, I have set up a failover cluster. So if we start the failover cluster manager, we could dig into the configuration that we currently have installed. So my failover cluster is called HV cluster at the domain called emcelect.local. Um, there are three nodes participating in that failover cluster configuration and currently those nodes don't have any shared storage. Um, so um, no failover cluster resources are available for like doing cluster shared volumes. All three nodes are running Hyper-V, so they are Hyper-V clusters. Um, I have three nodes installed. Um, they are um, sitting on top of my VMware workstation. If we have a look at the configuration, I added um, six additional disks to that configuration, each of 100 gigabytes in size. That will be um, used as scale I.O. disks um, later on. Before we start with the setup, which will only take a few moments, um, I will just review the architecture of scale I.O. for you. So scale I.O. is a software-defined storage or server-side storage area network, um, however you call it, and uh, makes use of commodity of the shelf devices, um, sometimes referred to as JBots or just a bunch of disks. Um, major components of scale IOs are the um, scale IO data client. The scale IO data client is the one that accesses the, the data from a scale IO um, server. So there is a scale IO data service running on service um, mapping the JBots or um, local hard drives building volumes and map them out to the clients. There's the metadata manager as well. He's not sitting in the IO pass. He's only there for configuration and monitoring. Um, the metadata manager um, is to be clustered and consists of two nodes plus a so-called tiebreaker for um, high availability. So the scale IO data client um, the only thing that he does is he maps the volumes that he gets from the Scale.io data service to the applications. So um, we run a Scale.io protocol which runs at very low latency on Ethernet or InfiniBand and access the volumes via the volume manager from the applications. Um, the Scale.io data service also talks to the volume manager and maps the block devices from the block device drivers across the volume manager to the Scale.io data service. The metadata manager itself is only for configuration and monitoring, as I said. Um, it monitors the capacities and the load balancing and makes decisions during rebuild processes or rebalancing processes um, for draining nodes or just expanding the configuration. Um, so Scale.io is a pure elastic system, so it can grow and shrink as you, uh, with your needs and um, eliminates the needs for storage arrays, complex switching fabrics and HBA since we can use all the standard components in your servers. Scale.io runs on standard um, Intel or AMD servers, it runs on Linux, Windows, um, Hyper-V, KVM, um, whatever flavor you want to have. Um, there are possible configurations. One is called the fully converged configuration that I will run in my demo where the SDS and the STC sit on the same machine. Um, there is another configuration possible, we call it two-layer configuration, where you separate the data service from the data clients. And this is also a possible configuration, but I would encourage you to use the fully converged configuration. That's all on reviewing the configuration. Let's now switch back into my demo and configure um, Scale.io um, for the first need. So we just flip over to the first node. Um, I hope PowerShell right now. Um, and I go into my scripts directory. I have a um, short PowerShell script that makes use of, of the um, SCLI, which is the Scale.io CLI which is responsible for um, just configuring the stuff. Um, so each command starts with, um, with um, SCLI minus user login, blah, 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 um, to create devices, to add devices, and it's 
consistent across all platforms. There's also a REST interface for those of you who might want to configure stuff with a REST interface or from PowerShell so you can make use of the REST interface. I prefer using the SCLI currently because I can use it on every platform. So that's the script that we have to start. So I just call it with mdm.ps1 minus csv num. I specify a number of cluster shared volumes because I'm not only that I'm configuring the SDS and map the physical devices um, for configuring the storage, I also map volumes to the cluster as cluster shared volumes. So I'm going to build six cluster shared volumes. Um, I can set the password of the MDM because default it's admin and I have to change it after installation. Um, and I want to run a minus verbose because with the minus verbose I have some screen steps where we can wait for a new command to to run. So first of all, I gather the IP addresses of all nodes um, being part of my Hyper-V cluster. So I will get three IP addresses. Um, I will configure the node. So first of all, we have to um, to accept the licensing. So those three nodes, 151, 152 and 153 will make my SDSs and SDCs and the metadata manager will be clustered between 151 and 152. So now we have to accept the license terms. You have a 10 days period where you can run it. Um, we have to change the password. We did change the password. And now we are asked to run the scale IO UI to follow the process that's running. So um, this is the first time I show you the scale IO UI. It's running on my, on my desktop computer and I sign in with password one, two, three. And this is the scale IO um, UI. It's a management dashboard. And as you currently see, we don't have a cluster for management. Um, it's only a, a single mode configuration right now. In the back end, we don't see anything configured right now. Here you will see popping up the SDSs later on. Um, no capacity, no um, scale IO data clients currently, no volumes mapped. So I will make this smaller than for a few moments. Put this here, put this a little bit up that we can see what happens right now. So now we formed the cluster, make this again a little bit larger and we see the system is right now clustered and we can go to the back end and in the back end it's already built it a protection domain called um, EMC Elect. Um, a protection domain is required um, to put all the volumes in um, and assign them to like um, failover zones. Um, so we configure the system right now. We renamed it to scale.io at elect and now we configure this um, scale.io data service and add the various disks of my operating system to the scale.io data service. And we will end up with having six drives per each data server. Now we go to the dashboard and we hopefully will see the SDCs getting connected. So we have three SDCs connected and right now we are already in the progress of configuring the volumes. So I switch to full screen back here again. Um, so we can see a volume is created for the cluster. It's mapped to the cluster and it's online. And I'm going to rename it um, to scale IO CSV. We do this six times. So at the end of the configuration, we will have six cluster shared volumes mapped to the cluster. Meanwhile, we move the first one to the first node, HV node one. So the first cluster shared volume right now sits on the first node. While this configuration is still running in the background, I open a new PowerShell and again do a CD to my scripts directory. And in the scripts directory, I have also a small script that um, does a, um, a performance test. Um, for the performance test, I just used Microsoft's disk speed command um, and I can pass some parameters um, like the pass um, that I want to test and it defaults to 
to cluster shed volume volume one the seconds i want to run it i uh, let's run it for like 360 seconds which is three minutes six zero thick fingers and go um while this test starts I make this a little bit slower again, uh, um, smaller again, and flip to my main dashboard, and you see the IOs right now running against the scale IO environment. Um, as you can see in the back end, it's going to distribute the IO amongst all nodes and amongst all disks. Um, so we get like a constant IO from from each node participating in in the environment. And um, we might boost this up later on to like 10,000 IOs or more, but currently this is limited to the amount of IOPS that's gonna be served from my hard drives. So pretty good. Right now we are running like 7,000 IOs. Um, remember, this is running on my VMware workstation. Six volumes are mapped right now, so we ordered six volumes. Um, we are just waiting for the last one to, be, to appear in the cluster. Once this is done, I will show you how to shut down nodes or what happens when I shut down a node, how the, the IO is being re redistributed. So I'm still waiting for the last volume to appear. That might take some time. Right now it's here. Um, this is depending on the refresh of the, um, of the system itself. So the bus needs to be rescanned and then we can bring the volume online into the cluster. So I'm doing all the formatting stuff in background. Um, just to, to avoid the manual steps. Okay, now my script is done. We have six cluster shed volumes. Um, the um, scale IO benchmark test is still running. Um, the disk speed test is still running. So I make this window a little bit smaller and I go and shut off hard, um, let's say the third node with just doing a power off. So let's see what happens when I do a power off. Um, Tiebreaker is down because the third node was the tiebreaker. One of the SDCs is down. Um, and you see there's a rebuild going on. The rebuild right now in this scenario um, runs with a full priority. So before go doing any front end read IOs, we are just rebuilding the data in the back end. So that means all data that normally is um, sitting on node three gets distributed on node two and one. Um, so we have a protected and a spare capacity still valid, um, but we also have an unavailable space currently um, because this is not used. We don't need to, to rebuild the unused space. You see my IOs going back up to 10,000 something IOPS, which is pretty good for this demo. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, the last thing that I may want to do, I just can start up my last node again. For this, I go to my desktop. Um, let's go out of this presentation right now here, um, and I start the last um, I start the last virtual machine again. Get vmx hv node three. and I start this VM. So once this VM is up and running, um, the STC will connect again to the cluster, the SDS will connect as well, and we will see a rebalance of the IOs going on. So once this node has joined the cluster um, or the, um, the scale IO nodes, the IOs will run again against three nodes. You can mix and match configurations, so it might be possible to add like some Linux nodes or some, some VMware ESX hosts or um, OpenStack systems to the system so you can grow up to thousands of hosts just serving the IOs and with every host you add your IOs will grow. So you see here right now we have more spare capacity that's unused um, the third node is up and the IOs are being rebalanced. Uh, the rebalance doesn't take too much back, um, background work, so um, the work is still going on normally. There's no prioritization right now sitting on this. That's so far for my scale IO demo. Um, so I would encourage you before you think about stuff like um, storage spaces or shared nothing, scale out file servers, just take a look on scale IO because this beast rocks and is awesome.